Okay, we're coming to you again from Twin Falls High School. Uh, my name is Mr. Price. We're going to talk about, uh, hopefully here, if I can get out of the screen, um, chapter 18-1 and basically what you see right here, the taxonomy. Uh, we'll start off by talking about Linnaeus and how he had seven taxons. Uh, the first one here is kingdom. The next one down is phylum, um, class, and then if I had more stuff here, you would see that there is order. Then we go down, and we're getting more specific as we go down, go down family. And then the last two get really specific and closely related to um, each other, genus, and I'll write it over here species and when you write species you got to make sure there's a couple rules um, one you'll write genus and species and you'll capitalize the genus and everything else after that will be in lowercase so our genus and species is homo sapiens which is this is awesome writing just so you know I'm really impressed with myself and what you need to do is underline it because I cannot write it in italics again make sure that's genus is capitalized. So moving on. Uh, why we do this? Um, we classify stuff so we can basically organize all the um, things that we find on this planet and as we move out um, and start studying life on other planets we're going to need to make some relationships. Uh, we tend to, if I were to bring all of you in here and put out a bunch of animals and plants on the tables you would do the same thing that um, Linnaeus did and basically create two divisions of plants and animals and this is kind of how it all started. So to study all these organisms what we've done as biologists and paleontologists and anything that's studying um, any forms of biological life is we give them some organization then we give them a name. Um, <clears throat> so far we've been organizing things um, by how they look and how they appear and where they live um, and we're going to change some of that as we go along, but we give it um, some organization according to the biological meaning. Uh, what a taxonomy is, is uh, it, when we're looking at it in classifying organism, it's the discipline of naming and classifying organisms according to um, levels and common things that they have. Um, so bears end up being in the same kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and then we can separate them into two different species, getting more specific as we go, but that's what a taxonomy is. Um, so what we do is we assign scientific names. So in a good classification system, um, we give it a universally accepted name. And what we talked about in class was um, how there are so many different names for like cougars um, and mountain lions are synonymous. You have um, sometimes they're called panthers and where that comes from is a panther is the um, Latin term for big cat so sometimes there's confusion and what we do instead of calling all of these things um, scientists you know like what's a cougar what's a mountain lion what's a panther we give it um, a binomial nomenclature scientific name and we call them a felis con color um, which is that Latin name that's universally accepted all over the world for um, what we know as a mountain lion and cougar. Again, why we do this is eliminates confusion because, you know, are we talking about leopard? Are we talking about a cougar? No, we're talking about felis con color or we're talking about panthera tigris, um, which is a common tiger. Um, it gets more specific on the exact species that it is um, and eliminates, you know, different names for different cats. Uh, groups what it does is it groups most similar organisms together and as we move through this you'll see it actually groups those that are mostly related together um, in evolutionary classification. This guy to our right is um, Carolas um, Linnaeus. Uh, what he came up with was binomial nomenclature. So he came up with the seven taxons, um, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, and then once he got to the bottom here he got to this thing that the genus is capitalized and the species in the lowercase and make sure that if it's not in italics you have to underline it which is this right here. So uh, what he did was basically came up with in the um, early 1800s um, this taxonomy that follows the rules that kingdom phylum class which you see here 
um, class order family genus species underline those two and that's what you get so there are some rules the rules when you're looking at this you're always going to write in italics if you can so on a computer it's really easy just go ahead and cut and or um, highlight it and click on italics if you're writing out like you've done on some of your labs you need to make sure that you underline it the first word the genus is always capitalized and everything after that is um, in lowercase. So just some of the rules that you got to remember. Genus capitalized, underline here, underline there. You have to have, when we start looking at the species, you have to have the genus with the species. You can't just say um, sapiens, which is ours, because there's other types of sapiens. So we'll say homo sapiens um, or canis lupus or what these guys are, Ursus Arctos. Notice that the first letter is capitalized. Notice that it's in italics, and that's the scientific binomial nomenclature name for a grizzly bear is Ursus Arctos. Um, the scientific name for this guy sticking out his tongue, the polar bear, is Ursus Maritimus. And again, if I can't put it in italics, I would underline it. Um, for the most part, to give it some meaning, species that are groups that can only inter interbreed. Now, some of you are going to ask questions, well, what about donkeys and what about ligers? And of course, there are living creatures, but when we give definition bio um, with biology, um, we're only looking at species that can interbreed and produce fertile offspring. Yes, ligers exist. Yes, donkeys exist, but they're not technically considered their own species unless they can interbreed and produce fertile offspring. So technicalities aside, yes, they're alive. Yes, they're here. Yes, it can happen. But um, for biology purposes, they are not considered their own species. Uh, again, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. There are seven. And Linnaeus' system of classification consisted of levels. It's got a hierarchical level setup. Uh, kingdom is the biggest, most encompassing, largest one. Phylum, getting more specific, slightly smaller. Class, order, again, we're working our way from largest to smallest and more specific down here. Um, so you can look at this. Anything that is in the same class also would be in the same phylum. Anything that's in the same order would also be in the same class, same phylum, and same kingdom. Anything that's in the same family like um, humanoids would be in the same order, class, phylum, and kingdom. So if they're all, if we're in the same genus, they would also be in the same family, same order, same class, same phylum, um, same kingdom. Uh, for now, there are seven different levels that Linnaeus came up with. And each level right here, so this is a taxon, kingdom is a taxon, phylum is a taxon, class is a taxon, Order is a taxon. Family is a taxon. Genus is a taxon. Genus and species is a taxon. Uh, real quick, this is a cladistic analysis or a cladogram. Uh, each one of these is a derived characteristic that separates it. We'll get to that in evolutionary relationships um, in the next section. Uh, so again, just want to work through this. Kingdom taxon. Um, phylum class, order, family, genus, species. I know it sounds redundant, but you gotta know this. Uh, some of you may need to memorize this. Kings play chess on Fridays, generally speaking, to remember the order. Remember, if I'm talking about two species that are in the same order, they're also in the same class, they're in the same phylum, they're also in the same kingdom. So please understand that, and I'll put up a picture of this. So what I mean by that is that you see that these two bears uh, grizzly bear and black bear, they are in the same genus, which is Ursus, which also means that they're in the same family, which is Ursidae. Okay, so again, I want you to understand that if we're in the same genus, we're also in the same family, the same order, the same class, the same phylum, and the same kingdom. So like us, we are in the animal kingdom. We're also in the same phylum, which is Chordata, which is vertebrae. We're also in the same um, mammal class, mammal, excuse me. Uh, we are all, now we start to branch off and go our own way. So, excuse me, let me put that back up. Make sure you understand that there's a point where we all separate and go our own way. We're going this way and we keep going, eventually getting down to our genus and species. 
But everything above this, we are definitely in these taxons when we start looking at um, us. Um, what I do want to point out to you is that this is also how I classify when you've been doing your dichotomous keys. So <clears throat> the first question here might be, is it animal or not? Or excuse me, if it um, is animal or not. So we've got all of these animals. The next one might be, does it have a backbone or not? So we drop out the sea star. The next one down, is it a mammal or not? We drop out um, the snake. And is it a conibera um, in the order conibera or not? So we keep dropping things out. So we drop out the squirrel. Is it in the ursidae? Does it have bear-like characteristics? So we drop out the fox. So we're just trying to get and be more specific um, using a dichotomous key, basically a either or type questionnaire that we can use to classify um, organisms according to their taxon. So make sure you understand this picture and you might want to pause and review this part of the PowerPoint again. Uh, Linnaeus basically in his time in the 1800s they had animals and plants. Uh, we're going to get much more specific as we go. There's actually six kingdoms now. Um, Eubacteria, archaea bacteria, plants, animals, and fungus. Um, each level down again gets more complex. So as we move down the taxonomy, as we go down from kingdom, we get more specific and I can actually show you that better here. As we move down kingdom, we're getting more specific with what kind of creature we are talking about. So boom, genus and species here down at the very end, very specific down here, most encompassing, broadest um, taxon. So again, know that each one of them is a taxon. And if I write this down, if you're patient enough, you're gonna see that there are actually seven of these in Linnaeus's seven levels, seven taxons for each one. And they get more specific as we go down. So again, understand that there are one through seven right now taxons or levels that we can put organisms in. I hope that helps. Thanks.